Greetings all, and welcome to the third episode of the VTP, or the Veteran Trainer's Perspective. The topic of this video is going to require a lot of analysis, so much so that I have decided to split it into three separate parts. But don't worry, we will be getting through them in an orderly fashion, so hopefully things won't drag on for too long. The subject of this episode is something that is seen in a lot of Pokemon families, but is not always analyzed to really understand why it happens in the first place. In this episode, we are going to look at the causes behind the loss of learned moves among Pokemon through the generations. Now, when I speak of learned moves, I am of course referring to the moves that Pokemon are capable of learning, whether it's by leveling up, as egg moves, or other artificial means like TMs, HMs, and move tutors. While every Pokemon is able to learn a unique set of moves that are specific to their biological capabilities, the moves that they naturally gain access to do not always stay the same. While it is very common to see the introduction of new moves into a Pokemon's move repertoire, as new generations are introduced along with new moves, what is less commonly spoken about is the loss of moves through progressive generations. In other words, when a Pokemon transitions from one generation to a higher one, in some cases, they may no longer have normal access to a move they once could learn. Although this usually does not have a substantial negative impact on their overall performance in battle and combat capabilities, examining these changes is a wonderful way to see into the minds of the developers as they tweak the movesets of Pokemon to make better sense of their natural abilities and, more importantly, how balanced they are as a whole in the games. So now, Let's take a look at some examples to show where the heads of the developers are at when it comes to deleting moves from a Pokemon's move repertoire. First up, and perhaps one of the most common examples to show, we can see examples of move deletion among Pokemon that evolve by Evolutionary Stone. These sorts of evolutions have existed for as long as the franchise has and are a common staple in the games and they are designed to carry a very specific set of risks and rewards. On the one hand, evolving a Pokemon with an evolutionary stone normally allows them to reach a fully evolved state at a fairly low experience level, thus giving trainers access to a powerful Pokemon early on in their journey. However, as a consequence, they often lose the ability to learn new attacks and moves in general to balance this out. The aim of the game is to provide this choice of risk and reward, but more directly, to encourage players to stick with weaker, unevolved Pokemon until they get access to their best moves by level up, and then evolve them in order to make their evolved forms as powerful and useful as they can possibly be in a fight. However, in earlier generations, these creatures were not always completely balanced, as in some cases, some of the moves they could still gain access to were a bit too useful for the risk to be as effective. They might still retain the ability to learn moves with experience, or, in rare cases, their movesets might be so ineffective that better moves have to be provided to them in order to make them properly balanced. The solution to all of these problems is to therefore remove problematic moves and replace them with more balanced ones, or to remove their ability to learn new moves completely. Raichu used to be able to get access to Growl and Thunder Wave in Generation 1, but these moves were removed starting in Generation 2. Growl was swapped out for Tail Whip, since Growl is something cutesier and more readily associated with a younger Pokémon, while Tail Whip would make more sense given that they retain a tail in Evolving. Thunder Wave was probably swapped out not only because it isn't really needed given Raichu's high base speed stat, but also because it might be seen as too useful of a move to have access to on one hand, or, on the other, something better replaced with a move like Quick Attack or Thunderbolt that works better as a whole in balancing Raichu's moves. Nido King still retained access to Horn Attack after Evolution in Generations 1 and 2, but it was removed starting in Generation 3. It is likely this was done because Horn Attack, despite being a basic move, is perhaps the most powerful of basic moves that a Pokemon can gain access to, and I can attest that it could easily help wreck opponents if your specimen was a high enough level fairly early on in the game in those generations. As such, its removal was likely for balance reasons, 
though it gained the ability to learn other more powerful moves in later generations even after evolution. Clefable was able to learn Moonlight in Generation 2, and in all honesty, being a stone-evolved Pokémon while retaining the ability to naturally learn a healing move is fairly unbalanced. This was removed starting in Generation 3, so trainers would have to really work with a Clefairy if they still wanted to gain access to that healing move. Fireplume retained the ability to learn Acid and Sleep Powder in Generation 1, but given that Acid was only available to their pre-evolutions at later levels in the first two generations, and that Sleep Powder is incredibly useful, removing these moves starting in Generation 2 was employed to help balance them out. Sweet Scent was phased out of their move pool starting in Generation 3 after having access to it in Generation 2, as it was replaced with Aromatherapy as a more useful and balanced move, while Absorb was phased out from Generations 2 and 3 starting in Generation 4 in favor of Mega Drain, a more powerful move that helps give Vileplume a bit more bite to their natural offenses and effectively replaces Absorb completely. This same change can be observed in Gloom's alternative evolution, Belossum. Ninetales originally had access to Tail Whip and Roar in Generation 1, but these moves did them little good in terms of combat effectiveness, as they did not have the physical power needed to take advantage of Tail Whip, and Roar had little use in combat under most circumstances, making their removal and replacement with better moves in Generation 2 understandable. At the same time though, they gained the ability to learn the Fire Spin attack at a fairly late level in Generation 2, but this presented a balance issue over time since it meant that there was less of a risk in evolving them since they could still gain access to some sort of additional offense naturally. As such, while this was a feature of their move pool in Generations 2 and 3, it was removed completely starting in Generation 4. Arcanine have seen quite a few changes in their move pool over the generations. In Generations 1 and 2, they could start off with access to the relatively powerful takedown attack, but because Arcanine are better suited for physical attacks, this actually gave them more use than was probably needed, and was removed starting in Generation 3. The same can be said about their acquisition of Flame Wheel at the start of Generation 2 as an upgrade to Ember, before it was also pulled out of their move repertoire starting in Generation 3 and replaced with Ember again. This did not last, though, as Ember was permanently taken out in Generation 4, giving Arcanine access to the Fire Fang attack instead, and in turn balancing them out again by giving them at least one good stab move that their stats were built to work with. The loss of Leer after Generation 2 is a bit odd considering it works well with their moveset, but it is possible that it was removed so as not to allow them to have a way of using their powerful physical offenses to greater effect than a balanced set would otherwise allow. Polyrath once had access to the Body Slam and Water Gun attacks in early generations, but lost them both over time. Since they are distinct from the rest of their family in being fighting types, the loss of Body Slam in Generation 2 makes sense as it was replaced with Submission to give them immediate access to some sort of fighting type stab move, while the removal of Water Gun after Generation 3 was done in the opposite favor, replacing it with Bubble Beam to provide these creatures access to a stronger base stab move to make the most of their slightly weaker special offenses. This same logic can be applied to the moveset of Politoed after Generation 3. Victory Bell had access to Wrap, Acid, Poison Powder, and Stun Spore in Generation 1, but these were removed starting in Generation 2 for various reasons. Poison Powder was removed so as not to give them any more moves that could be naturally learned after evolution. Wrap and Acid were removed as they likely provided Victory Bell too much initial versatility to make them balanced in their initial state. And Stun Spore was removed to limit the amount of status inflicting havoc they could potentially wreak, since they were already ahead of the game in getting automatic access to the Sleep Powder technique to incapacitate the opposition with. Cloyster originally had access to the Clamp Attack right away in Generation 1, but because the move was normally only learned by Shelter 
at a level notably higher than what you could acquire one at in that generation. It was removed from Cloyster's moveset starting in Generation 2, so as not to grant it early access to a move that normally would require a bit of training to get out of a shelter. Starmie started out with Tackle and Harden in Generation 1, but lost access to these moves over time, with Harden being phased out after Generation 1 and being replaced with Recover as a better testament to their regeneration abilities, and Tackle being phased out after Generation 2 in favor of only having the more biologically appropriate Rapid Spin Attack accessible to them. Starmie also once had access to Bubble Beam in Generation 2, but given its strong special offenses, its later replacement in Generation 3 with the weaker Water Gun attack made the creature more balanced from an offensive standpoint. Ludicolo have remained fairly consistent throughout the generations they have been a part of, but it is noted that they lost access to the Absorb attack after Generation 3. It was replaced instead with the Mega Drain attack, granting these creatures at least a decently powerful starting attack to work with in the absence of other useful moves. Shiftry is the only example of a stone-based evolution where all of their original moves, namely Pound, Harden, Growth, and Nature Power, are now completely inaccessible to them. While this might just be the case of correcting a balancing issue, as these moves are pretty paltry and give Shiftry little to work with, it also seems to be the result of an urge starting in Generation 4 to make Shiftry a superior fighter as a whole compared to Ludicolo. Given that they are supposed to be a darker and more dangerous entity compared to Nuzleaf and especially their Generation 3 counterpart Ludicolo, this shift does make some sense, granting these creatures access to the Faint Attack, Whirlwind, Nasty Plot, and Razorleaf moves instead in Generation 4, and thus making them fairly powerful move-wise for a stone-based evolution. Lastly, Delcaddy originally had the ability to learn the Growl technique, but this was phased out in favor of the Fake Out attack in Generation 4. This was likely done in reference to their general attitude, as they rarely ever try to be as cute as their pre-evolved form, and are more likely to simply surprise their opposition and run away while they are distracted, rarely ever choosing to fight if they don't have to. Sometimes, a move may be removed from a Pokémon's move repertoire if there is an issue of redundancy, or where they learn more than one move that has the same basic effect or damage output, meaning that having two of them in a single moveset would ultimately be pointless and make for awkward movesets. This also goes for moves that can be learned through different methods, such as partially eliminating moves from a set if they can be learned both naturally and through other means like breeding. Looking at the members of the female Nidoran family, we can see that they have multiple basic attacks that result in this sort of redundancy. The members of this family could originally learn both Tackle and Scratch, which deal similar amounts of damage to an opponent. As such, starting in Generation 3, Tackle was removed in favor of the Scratch attack, which at the time had a slightly higher base power. The members of the Geodude family follow this trend as well, as in Generations 1 and 2, they had access to both Defense Curl and Harden, which both have the same basic effect. Starting in Generation 3, they were only given access to Defense Curl and Harden was removed, primarily because Defense Curl, at the very least, grants them an edge by additionally increasing the power of their rollout attack alongside the defense boost it provides. The two main examples of redundancy via Egg Move to present here involve Dunsparce and Snubble. Originally, Dunsparce could learn Rage as an Egg Move, but this was removed after Generation 2 since it already learns Rage naturally. The exact same can be said for Snubble and the Lick Attack. Both of them lost these moves as Egg Moves starting in Generation 3. Another major category of redundancy can be seen in moves that were originally only available as Egg Moves, but eventually became more accessible when said moves were turned into TMs or made available through other means. Since a move as a TM, as an example, can be learned by a certain variety of Pokémon, it makes sense then that removing them from an Egg Move list would happen since TM moves known by the father are always passed down to the offspring if they can learn them regardless. A good example would be Psyduck being able to learn Ice Beam via Egg Move in Generation 2. 
It made sense since Ice Beam was not available as a TM in Generation 2, but by Generation 3, it had become redundant and its removal imminent. Psychic faced the same fate in its egg move pool in Generations 2 and 3, as the members of the Psyduck family were unable to learn Psychic via TM until Generation 4. One particular move that seemed to be strangely abundant for a while in some move repertoires was the Swift Attack. As a whole, the attack is a pretty bland attack, with its only special attribute being that it never misses its target, and it seems that its use of light energy to deal damage made it a more common move to see in past generations than it is today, going so far as to be available as a TM in Generation 2. However, it appears that, over time, as a shift towards looking at what Pokémon could truly be capable of learning occurred in progressing generations, something that I mentioned in the first episode of the VTP. Moves such as this were no longer plastered onto certain Pokémon as a more realistic outlook on their move capabilities began to emerge. Pikachu originally had access to the move in red, blue, and green, but lost it as part of the more electric-centered move pool shift that occurred in Pokémon Yellow having it replaced with a far more powerful and useful Thunderbolt attack. The members of the Magnemite family held onto Swift from Generations 1 to 3, but the fact that it relied on their attack stat to deal damage did not help them out much. To make them more useful and complement the introduction of the family's final evolution, Magnezone, in Generation 4, the move was removed and replaced with a far more useful Discharge attack. Yanma had access to the move initially in gold and silver, but a lack of stab moves made it fairly unbalanced, so the move was replaced in crystal by wing attack, which makes more sense to see in the creature's move repertoire from an anatomical perspective. Lastly, in the case of Lugia and ho -Oh, while they retained the move from Generation 2 all the way to Generation 4, it was lost in the shuffle that took place in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, where the movesets of these creatures were heavily altered in order to make them more player-friendly when encountering them in those games. Swift was replaced with their special signature attack, while this ultimate replacement later down the line became Natural Gift. These special changes have remained the same ever since. Now that we've taken a look at a few special groups, let's examine some unique individual cases of learnable moves being lost. The Charmander family has featured a lot of move removal over the generations, as its overall treatment by fans has been reflected in the actions of the developers. In Generation 1, for example, these creatures naturally gained access to the Leer and Rage moves, but they were removed over time. Leer was lost immediately in Generation 2, and it's possible that this was removed due to these creatures losing the darker-looking aspects of their nature over time, or simply as a way to mitigate a sense of over-effectiveness in their physical attacks versus their special ones. Regardless, it seems to have been replaced with the smokescreen technique instead in terms of the position of the move in their natural move list, which makes a little more sense given their fire-type powers. Rage was phased out in Generation 3, as both part of the move changes that occurred to Pokémon during the introduction of Fire Red and Leaf Green, and again as a reflection of a changing outlook on their behavior, turning them from rage-filled monsters into more controllable creatures that children could safely play with, as Rage's level slot was replaced with a smoke screen in those games. Speaking of Fire Red and Leaf Green, there was a huge change in the Charmander family's move pool with the introduction of Metal Claw into their natural move repertoire only for it to be relegated to an egg move later on. I think this was only made a part of their moveset in order to give players who chose Charmander as their starter a fairer time against Brock, the first gym leader of the game, since the Steel type is super effective against the Rock type. Both Charmander and Charmeleon were able to learn Outrage via Move Tutor in Generation 5, but this was removed later on so only Charizard could be taught it testifying to their special dragon-like form. And lastly, in Generation 2, Charizard was somehow able to learn the Sandstorm technique via TM. It is possible that the initial thought was that the creatures could use their wings to generate the storm, but seeing as it made little sense given their type assignment, 
it was quickly removed in Generation 3. In Pokemon Crystal, Ekans was able to learn the Crunch Attack as an egg move, but this power was taken away from them starting with Generation 3. It is likely that the initial thought was that, if they could learn Bite, then Crunch wasn't out of the question. But given that they lacked substantial fangs of any kind, having them learn a move that really requires a serious set of teeth probably seemed a bit too nonsensical, hence why it was removed in Generation 3. Even so, it is noted that this was not the end for Crunch in the family, as its evolved form Arbok gained access to the attack starting in Generation 4. It's interesting to see that the Otters family was really set up to be the go-to family for Grass-type offense in Generation 1 if you didn't choose Bulbasaur as your starter, as Otters and Gloom possessed the ability to naturally learn the Solar Beam attack, as did Bellossom in Generation 2. Unfortunately, since gathering sunlight to use as a powerful weapon wasn't exactly something they were really designed to be able to do, Otters in particular being nocturnal in nature, the move was dropped from the move pools of Oddish and Gloom immediately in Generation 2, having them rely on the more appropriate Petal Dance attack as their best natural grass-type attack, while Belossum lost access to it in Generation 4, gaining access to the more powerful Leaf Storm attack instead. Looking back at Fire Red and Leaf Green, we can see some more shenanigans with the Meowth family's moveset, as they were able to learn the Swagger technique in those games, and those games alone. It is likely that the developers were looking towards their fickle natures when including this move, but as a whole, it doesn't quite fit their sometimes downright cruel behavior and treatment of others so much as it would an individual that is proud and arrogant. It eventually ended up being replaced with moves like Captivate and Nasty Plot, which are more in line with the devious personalities these cats are known to possess. Golem once shared with their pre-evolutions the ability to learn the Rollout Attack since the move's introduction in Generation 2, but given their larger mass and ability to completely tuck in their limbs when rolling, it makes more sense that they would end up rolling onto and over their targets instead of just plowing into them in terms of their overall motion. As such, it makes sense then why they lost the ability to learn the Rollout Attack in Generation 5, having it replaced with the Steamroller Attack. Both Smoochum and their evolved form, Jinx, have lost access to one move during their time in the series. Smoochum were once able to learn the lovely kiss technique as an egg move, it being the signature technique of their evolved form, but it was removed from their Generation 2 egg move list in Crystal, likely to keep it as Jinx's signature move as its execution was designed solely with Jinx in mind. And on that note, Jinx were once able to learn the Thrash attack naturally in Generation 1, but lost it afterwards. While it may have been seen as a violent form of the wiggly movement they make naturally when they walk, it seems that its true physical requirements were seen as nonsensical in retrospect, given that it would have involved, well, violent hip thrusting, as it was removed immediately starting in Generation 2. Pinsir originally had natural access to the Slash attack in Generation 1, but lost it immediately in Generation 2. Although it might seem like a strange inclusion, it is likely that Slash was added to their moves because they were supposed to act as a version counterpart to Scyther in Generation 1. And since Scyther's main damaging attack was Slash, it made sense for the same to be replicated in its counterpart in the absence of any viable bug-type moves. Gyarados originally started out with the Bite Attack as their primary base attack in Generation 1, but for some strange reason, their starting move was made Tackle instead in Pokémon Yellow. This transition to Thrash in Generation 2, which is quite appropriate for the species, so this moment stands out as a bit strange. It is likely that this was done so as to make these creatures a fairer catch, as they could be caught at relatively low levels in Yellow, and thus having Bite right away would have seemed odd and overpowered, making its one-time appearance and removal an attempt to balance a potentially unbalanced Pokémon, only for it to be rebalanced in the succeeding generation. Chincho originally had access to Supersonic as an egg move in Generation 2, but it was removed starting in Generation 3. While the exact reason isn't entirely clear, 
It is quite possible that this was done as an elimination of a partial redundancy, as Chin Cho naturally gained access to the Confuse Ray technique, which has the same effect as Supersonic, but is much, much more accurate. And lastly, for this part of the episode, let's take a look at the legendary birds of Generation 1. Back in the beginning of the series, these creatures had extremely limited move pools to work with naturally, so the most had to be made with them to make them a threat. Zapdos was good to go, as it got both Thundershock as a basic move and Drill Peck as a powerful stab move for its partial flying type assignment. But what about the others? Well, in Generation 1, Articuno got access to Peck as a basic stab move, but lost it in subsequent generations. This can easily be chalked up to getting access to Gust instead as a stab move, which makes sense, as these creatures have fairly small, delicate beaks that are really not meant for pecking. Moltres got hit even harder, as two of its moves from Generation 1 were removed in subsequent generations. On the one hand, it had and then lost access to the peck attack, having it replaced with the better wing attack in Generation 2, which makes sense given their powerful flaming wings. On the other hand, they also had and lost access to the Leer technique in Generation 2. In hindsight, this is not the kind of move that these creatures demonstrate the necessary behavior to truly utilize, but it can be seen as a move that complemented Moltres' stats initially, as its second highest base stat, outside of special attack, was its attack stat, something that Leer could have taken advantage of. Well, that's all for now but there's plenty more where that came from, so stay tuned in for the next part of this episode of the VTP. Thank you all for watching this video. It is always an honor to be able to speak with you all on the subject of Pokemon in a way that brings me great joy and happiness in my work. If you would like to keep tabs on past and future work, click that subscribe button, check out my work on DeviantArt, and don't be shy about following me on Twitter where you can find pertinent announcements on upcoming work before it is officially posted. Links to both can be found in the video description. If you would like to support my work and help Miguel and I continue to produce more content for you and improve upon our presentation, please visit us at my Patreon page, which you can also find a link to in the video description. Yeah, no. With that, I thank you for watching and I wish you well.